Hello. So today I wanted to do a fun video in combination of a couple things. Today, as you guys are watching this, it is my birthday. I turn 29 years old today. I love getting older. I'm not scared of turning 30. I think 30s are like your prime. So I'm loving it. And probably as you're watching this, I'm getting ready to get my half sleeve done, which I'm probably in pain right now. <laughs> And I wanted to film this video because I didn't get around to filming a fun video for celebrating 7,000 subscribers on the channel. So I recently hit 8,000. So I thought do a combination of a fun birthday celebration and celebrating 8,000 subscribers. Thank you guys all so much for your support on the channel. It means so much to me. I have like the best subscribers ever. You guys are all amazing. So kind and supportive and sweet and fun to talk about books with. So I appreciate each and every one of you. So I have asked you guys on YouTube and Instagram to leave your assumptions about me. And I thought it would be really fun to see what you guys assume about me. And some are spot on and some are not. So let's just get right into the assumptions. We'll start with the YouTube comments. The first one says, in high school, your classmates awarded you with best smile in a yearbook at least once. And this is not true. I still have my yearbook somewhere. I can't recall who won best smile. I kind of want to look it up now, but I actually was voted most changed because I went through like quite the transformation from freshman year to senior year. I was not a cute middle schooler, junior higher, not at all. <laughs> and I changed a lot by my senior year. So I was most changed. I'd assume you're going to make a collaboration video with Daniel. Yes, definitely. We're dating and we both do booktube so we have a couple ideas of things we want to do together but when we're together we don't really talk about youtube much or like do book related things often so we just haven't done it yet you might have been in love with a girl at one time this is not correct i can see why you would say that especially with all of my favorite female characters i clearly have a type but no i have not this one makes me laugh it says i assume that you are filled with dread if or when you move in with your boyfriend because of the huge amount of books and doubles you would end up having so we've already discussed this his books will stay his books and my books will stay my books and we will have separate filming areas because that's the only thing that makes sense. But also, I'm not filled with dread at all. I think that would be awesome to have like two full libraries in one house. Like that's every book lover's dream. I'd assume you're more of a cat person than a dog person. You'd assume correctly, my friend. One thing that generally makes people really dislike me is that I hate dogs. <laughs> I'm not sorry for saying it. I love people who own dogs and if you own dogs, I will, you know, like pet them, like, but I'm never going to run up to a dog and be like, oh my God, look at the dog. No, but I do have three cats. So yes, I'm fond of cats. How many people are gonna unsubscribe from that? <laughs> you probably did 99% of the work in the majority of school projects. You are correct. <laughs> One of my best friends and I still have conversations to this day about high school projects and people that just skated by in high school by copying us or by having us do all the work in projects. So yes, and that is because I'm a control freak and I don't trust anyone to do things the way that they need to be done. I know this is not a good personality trait, but it resulted in A's, graduated with a 4.0. I love this. I assume you love your cats more than people or most people. <laughs> you are more than correct because um, the cats, they are, they're not, they're my children, okay? I rescued all three of them. They were all very sick when I got them at different times. I had to nurture them back to health and give them medication. Not for like a small period of time. I mean like months at a time. My one oldest cat that I rescued from a shelter, she was so sick that all the other animals in the shelter had to be put down because of the viruses and whatever else they had. So we had so many vet trips. She had to like feed her paste. My other kittens were beyond sick feral cats you couldn't touch them they're my children and also i don't like people not at all i like you guys you have a well-paying job and went far in college i would say that i have a well-paying job in the sense that it's stable and i make enough to meet my needs i'm not like rich by any means but that's part of the reason i chose dental hygiene because it's a stable career with steady pay for the most part this pandemic is really causing a problem for that but we can't do anything about it i went far in college i dual enrolled my senior year of high school so i got a year of prerequisites out of the way while i was still in high school i got to skip my first 
two or three hours of the day and my high school paid for college credits so that was lucky so then i graduated from college a year early with my degree in dental hygiene and then I worked as a hygienist for five or six years and decided I wanted to be a dentist. So I went back to school at the University of Michigan to pursue dental school there. And I had six more years after the four years of dental hygiene school. And I did a full year, busted my butt and sacrificed everything in life, friends, family, my sanity. And I said, no amount of money or prestige in job title is worth the way that I feel right now. I can't do it for five more years. So I went back to work as a hygienist and I'm happier than ever with my job now. So I have a bit of student debt from that experience, but it's well worth how much I enjoy my job now. So I did not go as far in school as I would have liked. If I would have went to dental school right out of high school and completed it, I think that would have been a much better choice, but I was so burnt out on school because of like AP classes and college classes and I just didn't want to be in school that long. I'm somebody who school comes really easy to me and I don't struggle with it, but I hated being in school so much. Now that's completely opposite of I love learning and if I could take all of these college classes without being tested over them, I'd be doing it every day of my life. I miss my biology classes and my organic chemistry and physical chemistry classes so much at U of M. I loved learning about those subjects. It's my favorite, but I just hate tests. Even though I'm good at them, I, the stress. I am an anxiety ridden person. If you had the opportunity to live in a peaceful fantasy world, you'd permanently leave the real world behind. Also, congrats on 8K, you totally deserve it. Thank you so much. Oh, I would even leave the real world for a not peaceful fantasy world. Earth is boring, I am over it, I am ready for some next world shit, and that's where I'd rather be. So I'd probably prefer a peaceful world, but what is the likelihood of that? There's gonna be some type of turmoil going on. Is this even a peaceful world? So I'll take any fantasy world over this world. If you guys don't know, I have a tattoo on my back that says, for those who dream of stranger worlds. So you get me. You wanted to be a veterinarian when you were younger. At some point I did. I think my sister wanted this more than me, but the careers that I wanted, my mom has a paper from me in second grade saying I wanted to be a dental hygienist, which makes no sense. I had a ton of orthodontic work and dental work, mouth surgery, expander braces for four years. So that's kind of what got me interested in the dental field. I wanted to be a high school AP Calc math teacher for as long as I can remember. And part of me wishes I still was a teacher because I do think I would love that more, but dental hygiene is where I ended up. I wanted to be an orthodontist, but that's eight years of dental school and then you have to specialize. So another three years after that. So that's 11 years of school. And <laughs> I just didn't want to do that. I assume that you love people, but would still rather read a book most days. Yes, honey. Um, I don't love people. Uh, I love select people. You, All of you on my channel, I love you all. You are my people. But just day to day, I'm not a people person. I am not a people person. I'm really good at being a people person for my job because that's a job requirement. But yeah, for the most part, I'd rather be alone. <laughs> I like being alone. I assume you were a wild child growing up. I had to send this comment to my mom. <laughs> all she did was laugh. I was always in trouble always getting punished, always in trouble. <laughs> and so, yes. <laughs> My perfect angel of a sister, Jessica, who's on this channel, was never in trouble a day in her life. And I just need to tell this story for anyone who cares, if not skip ahead. The one day that my sister was supposed to be in trouble, I was learning how to drive and I accidentally hit the gas instead of the brakes. So I drove through the garage wall and ruined the car. And so she didn't even get in trouble. It was one of the worst days for me. And I wish I could say that was the only time I hit a garage, but it's not. While you have had ups and downs mentally and emotionally, you are in the best place of your life so far. You have a great support system, people who surround you. Congratulations on 8K, you totally deserve it. Thank you so much. Yes, I would say I had a really, really great stable upbringing and childhood. So that was like a, a great, super happy, healthy time in my life as well. But as far as like adulthood, probably from like 21 to now 29, I am by far in the best place that I've been. It has been a lot of bad years from the age of 21 to 28, I would say mostly just down, just down 
hill. So yeah, now life is great. Life is the best it's been in so long and I am surrounded by the most supportive, loving family you could possibly have and phenomenal friends and a wonderful supportive relationship and I couldn't ask for more. I assume you just read from what you have on your TBR even if you are not feeling like reading them. That is partially correct and incorrect. So I really like to stick to my TBRs and if there's something else I'm really drawn to read, I won't read it if I still have books left on the TBR that I make and I hate that. It drives me insane which is why you'll see my January TBR is like nothing but fun reads that I've been dying to read because I feel like I've had this set TBR for so many months now. However, if I really hate something and I'm not enjoying it at all, 99% of the time I will just DNF it. There's a few occasions if I already own the physical book or someone sent it to me or I'm buddy reading it or something like that, likely I will still continue on with it. But other than that, if I'm not enjoying something, I'll just stop reading it because life is too short to read bad books. But I do feel a little shackled by my TBR videos sometimes. I assume you love Red Rising series more than First Law series. Ooh. You know, that's a really tough one because I just made my video list and I put for, uh, Red Rising way farther down than I did First Law. But if I really sit back and think about the writing and the plot, I probably like Red Rising way more. But the tone and the humor and the characters of First Law, I like way more. It's kind of comparing apples to oranges and I love them dearly for different reasons and I have a really hard putting a set order on the books that I love because I feel like when you love things for different reasons, how can you put them in order, I guess. I assumed that you'd like it more but I get why you didn't. You know, I assumed that I would too but the thing is I really loved the first 80-85% of it. So it's still a book that I'm glad I read and I really enjoyed the majority of it. We're talking a thousand page book and I liked 80% of it. So that's pretty good. You did dance in high school. No, my friend, I cannot dance to save my life. <laughs> oh God, I did ballet when I was a little kid and then I just had no desire to keep going. But I think I was having this conversation with Daniel the other day and we were talking about, would you rather be able to do this or that? And I was like, dance all the way. Oh my God, I would kill to be good at dancing. Any kind of dance, all the kinds of dance, I would love that. But your girl's not that coordinated. If you didn't see the video of where I ran into the wall, I assume that you enjoy playing video games, but specifically the RPGs like Skyrim. Also congrats on 8K, proud of all the growth on your channel. Thank you so much. Okay, so I enjoy playing video games. I am terrible at playing video games. So when I was in high school, I used to go to my boyfriend's house all the time and we would just sit and play Call of Duty. And then it got to the point where everyone was like playing it so much, they were so good at it that like I would just die right away. And that ended my video game playing career. <laughs> and then I don't have any game playing console right now because my ex has it. And I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn for a while and because it had been so long of me not playing any video games, like me trying to have like the hand-eye coordination to get used to using the controller was pretty rough. I was loving Horizon Zero Dawn, like loving it. And then, you know, I just had to stop playing it. So yeah, I would love to play video games, but I would need to like practice. Also, the one game that I wanted to play more than anything is Witcher because I loved the books and the show. And so that's one that I really wanna play. But I don't know what Skyrim is. I would assume that you're dating Daniel. Yes, not a secret. Um, yeah, we are dating. And he is the greatest, genuinely the best person. He's my favorite. The next one, I had to send him this comment. You totally slid into Daniel's DMs. No comment. <laughs> no, really, it wasn't. It was not a situation like that. We started talking over something that was really serious, actually. You never read Twilight. Oh, my friend, you are incorrect. I was Twilight obsessed. I would stay up till 3 a.m. on a school night reading Twilight when I had to be up at 5 a.m. to feed the horses. I would sit with that book in my hands every spare second of the day. My parents would try to talk to me and I'd be like, I can't, I'm reading. And then I would reread them again. I would go to the midnight movie releases. I would drive home from work at night in the woods and be like, I hope I meet Edward Cullen. Edward Cullen, where are you? I was team Edward, man. And um, not anymore. And I think that the whole book series and whatever, I think it's all pretty toxic actually. And really sets a lot of standards for unhealthy relationships and 
Uh, I really have a problem with it, actually. However, back in the day, your girl loved it. I think I had an Edward Cullen poster in my closet next to the Jonas Brothers. You want to be a writer. I would love to write poetry, and I used to when I was younger. And when I was younger, I would write like children's books. That's the other thing. And when I was younger, I said I wanted to be a children's book author and illustrator because I would make my books and I would draw pictures in them. I love to sketch. I'm not very talented at it, but like just rough sketches, I love doing. So that I did want to do, and I love poetry. As far as writing like a novel, Ooh, I could never do that. I just, that's something that every time I'm reading, I think like, how do authors possibly come up with these concepts and create it all? And the dialogue and just, it's fascinating to me and mind boggling to me and good on all of you that do it because you guys are so talented, but I am not that talented. I have a math, science, biology brain, not language and arts writing. Gratuitous assumption. You're not as much of a goody two-shoes that some people might assume you are. <laughs> if based solely off the sweet and wholesome nature of your channel, your sense of humor can be a little dark or risque, but you believe that laughter is a powerful and therapeutic expression to help coping with the ups and downs that life can throw our way from time to time. Laughter is medicine for the soul. P.S. Congratulations on 8K. Thank you so much. That's so kind. This is a tough one. I have multiple sides to my personality. I would say that I am not always like I present myself on my channel, although this is a side of my personality, but the me that I'm putting in videos that are on the internet forever for everyone to see, people from my work, my family members. I know there's a librarian who sometimes shows videos to her kids in her book club. I want my best face forward. Getting to know me in real life might be a little different. <laughs> So yeah, you assume correctly, but I don't want anyone to think it's like a front. It's not whatsoever. Like this is just like, you know, meet the parents, right? I don't know. You were a cheerleader. No, no problem with cheerleaders. Um, I think that they're very talented and, but I was not, no, not at all. I wasn't in any of those types of sports in high school. Although you are strong, athletic, and enjoy shooting stuff with a gun, I do. You are a kind, loving person with a heart of gold. That is so sweet, thank you so much. Um, I would like to say so, yeah. I think that something about me is I love a little bit too hard maybe with all of myself, and it's, you know, gotten me into some trouble in my time. <laughs> but I can't do anything halfway. So I try to be as helpful and caring to those around me as I can be. And I would like to think of myself as a good person. You don't like literary fiction and you enjoy high classic style fantasy more than grimdark. No, 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 no. Grimdark is my favorite. Grimdark is where it's at. Why I love First Law. I would say Malzahn is grimdark. I love Song of Ice and Fire grimdark. Give me all the grimdark. But I do love classic style fantasy as well. But I really like the dark gritty worlds. That is where my true favorites lie. Okay, last one from YouTube. You're a super sweet person, but if someone messed with your child, you would turn into a mama bear so freaking fast. I don't have a child, but if someone messed with my nephew, I will come for you. I love that little boy more than anything in the entire world. And it's the strangest thing because I, I didn't know that I could feel so protective about a child that's not even my own, but I would die for that kid. So, I mean, if that answers your question close enough, <laughs> Yeah, pretty much any of my family or friends I feel that way about. Okay, getting to the Instagram responses. There are so many, this video is gonna be so long. You are a loyal friend even if you don't hang out with your friends a lot. I would like to say absolutely. I am an extremely loyal person, whether that's family or friends or whoever I'm dating. I am like as loyal as they come and I would never do anything to hurt anyone around me and I'm always there for them. So yes, usually I actually do see my friends quite a bit, but with quarantine, <laughs> that's been pretty tricky. We do like some Snapchat group calls and FaceTime type of situations, but unfortunately we all have not been able to really get together much and it's really sad. I love this one so much. You're a little off kilter, but in a great way. I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly how you mean off kilter, but I'm just gonna say across the board probably. You're a hard rock slash metal fan. Yeah, man, absolutely. I started getting into metal when I was like 17 probably. Before that I was a country music lover, if you could even believe it. I still like some other things. I always, always go back to my favorite classic. I listen to Rob Zombie, Metallica, and Tool 
all the freaking time. But then I kind of like rotate through which bands I'm loving at the time. Dance Gavin Dance, As I Lay Dying, Wage War, Beartooth. There's just like a couple. But I listen to people like Halsey and Machine Gun Kelly. And you know, I, I do like some variety, but 99% of the time I want something screaming in my ears. It helps you cope with your anger. If you have anger issues, I would not say I have anger issues. That came out wrong. I have dealt with a lot of things in life that have made me very angry and a lot of unfair things have happened to me and metal helps 10 out of 10 times. You stay quiet when people want to argue because you don't want to use the energy. A hundred thousand percent. Now, when I was younger, completely opposite of this. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. When I was younger, I would probably yell a lot. Now, because of my past and what I've been through and where I'm at now, I cannot use enough energy to like come out of that level of stable place. Probably a flaw of mine is that I am too quiet and don't speak my mind enough now because it just, it's not worth the fighting and arguing. So you're definitely correct. You don't get easily mad or pissed off at people. I would say I get annoyed sometimes, but it takes a lot to really make me mad at somebody and I forgive way too easily. So to get truly mad at somebody, yeah, it takes a lot. You were not popular nor unliked in high school, but in the middle. Yeah, I definitely was not popular. I had friends who were popular and I wouldn't say I was like unliked. I was in like some advanced classes in the grade above me and all of my friends were like the smart kids. So, you know, we were just only labeled like the smart kids. You can't really like get out of that box once you're put in that box. So that's what we were and I didn't care. All I cared about in high school, I mean like I had, I had a boyfriend who was older than me and he didn't go to my school. So all I cared about was my grades. I wanted a 4.0, I wanted to get into college, I wanted a good scholarship and all I cared about was getting A's. You probably call your cats your children. Well, I think you've seen that a couple times in this video already. Don't worry, I do that too. Yeah, man, pets are children. They are my babies. I would do anything for them. Another you and Daniel are cooking up a collaboration video. Yeah, we'll probably do things from time to time. <laughs> Who says that you own a lot of tank tops, sir? I own a lot of clothing and I have done my best to like donate and get rid of things that I don't need as I'm moving and shifting into a minimalist lifestyle and I do not purchase clothes frequently whatsoever, but I used to have a clothes buying habit. Therefore, I have acquired a lot of things over the years and I like plain things and I also am always in a tank top. I like to keep my house super hot because I don't like to wear layers. So I want to be in like as minimal clothing as possible all the time. I'm not sure how that comes across, but I just would rather be in shorts and a tank top all the time. Now I feel weird. You like romances. I'm guessing that's a joke. I like my romance in real life. You believe in God, your feelings about church and organized religion have shifted. Absolutely. Uh, I grew up in a very religious household, uh, very sheltered childhood, very, this is the only way to do things. And through my own life experiences and pathways, I have really been able to choose what I want to do and what I want to believe. And I believe in God, but I dislike organized religion to an extent. I believe to each their own, whatever makes everybody happy. So if you fall into that category, I don't think down upon you whatsoever. I think if it's working for you, that's beautiful and wonderful. But my views have definitely shifted from the way I was brought up. The next one is you are open-minded slash spiritual, but not religious. I would not say I'm religious because I just don't like that word. However, I do believe in God and I do believe in having a relationship with God for myself. You are tall. I think I'm tall. I'm basically 5'8", which for a female is pretty tall. Nick, you are wicked tech savvy and love romance novels. Okay, so if you know me in real life, I am the most technology challenged person. It's a miracle that I can like edit videos and upload them to YouTube. I think I've talked about this on my channel before, but Nick has to help me all the time. I'll be like almost crying. Like I can't make this video process. And he knows how much I love my romance novels. JK, I hate romance in books. Oh, Adam, best book reviewer ever. Not even close. You're so sweet. Thank you. That you don't take a lot of BS. You are correct. I have put up with a lot of BS in my lifetime more than my fair share. And now if something doesn't feel right or someone's not being respectful, etc., whatever it may be, I'm done. And it, that's the end of that. You seem like an old soul or a kindred spirit. I would definitely say I'm an old soul. I have 
always had friends that were much older than me my whole life. I've never really hung out with people younger than me. I have just always related more to people who are older than me. So yeah, I would definitely say I'm an old soul. You were that goth punk emo kid in high school. Also, your hair looks amazing. Thank you. To a degree, I did not present myself visually that way whatsoever because I just believe that you can be multifaceted. You can have different versions of yourself that are still true to yourself. I would, I wore like high heels to high school every single day. I was that stupid, <laughs> but I would be like moshing at a metal show. And I think you can be both. And that's why to this day, when people see me, they're like, you like metal? And I'm like, yeah, so. So yeah, I didn't look like that. However, that was me and that was what I was doing. And it was always my friends would be like, why do you like this type of music? You'd be cool to have a beer with. Well, I'd say so. I think I'm a lot of fun to drink with. I'm a very, very happy laughing drinker. You're an alien. Am I? Or am I a vampire? You're mean. Well, um, sorry that you think that. That makes me sad. Uh, but I don't think anyone in my real life would say that I'm mean. No one, I would hope. You're a nerd. Um, I guess it depends on what that means to you. I love learning. I love science. I love reading. I like nerdy things. So I would like to consider myself a nerd because to me, that's a compliment. You didn't start seriously reading for pleasure until late high school or college. I would say as I always was a big reader as a kid, like AR points, like no one's business. My mom always took us to the library all the time. It was like our favorite thing to do. And then in high school, I read a little bit, you know, like consistently, but that meant like a couple books a year. And then in college, life was insane because one, I was like partying on the weekends and then just trying to get everything done during the week and hygiene school is very, very difficult. So I didn't read at all in college. And then after college, once I graduated is when I got back into reading again and that would be the mortal instruments that did that for me. I'm under the assumption that you prefer orange juice over apple juice. That would be 1000% correct if I drank juice. I don't drink juice ever, but if I had to choose one or the other, absolutely orange every time. Apple juice is gross. Oh, who likes apple juice? Raise your hand, not me. I don't like making assumptions, but I love your channel. Thank you so much. You consider yourself to be an exceptional... <laughs> you consider yourself to be an exceptionally talented tree climber. Do you know me in real life or you just follow my Instagram? <laughs> I like to climb trees. Yeah. <laughs> Not really talented at it, but I always try. You're 5'4 or shorter. No, I'm 5'8. You are a workaholic. Yes, it's a problem. I'm trying to work on it, but it's really hard. I don't like downtime. I like constantly being busy or like my mind engaged in something, which is why I can't watch TV or movies because it's too much time for my brain to be like, ah, so yeah. I wish I wasn't though. You can't go a day without working out. Yeah, this is this is an unfortunate thing. So for those of you who don't know about my eating disorder treatment, I went from working out two and a half hours, seven days a week for the last like three years at least. I was running like half marathons every weekend, running over 50 miles a week. Now after treatment and trying to make progress on my own, I work out for 45 minutes, seven days a week because that's the best I can do right now. And I would really like to have at least one day off a week, but that's not a move that I feel comfortable making yet, but I would like it to be. So it's kind of a hard subject for me, but yeah. You keep a small trusted group of friends. Yes, absolutely. I have never been that person who has a million friends. So when I see people getting married and they have like 17 bridesmaids, I'm like, I don't even know 17 females. We have a close, tight-knit group of friends who we all have each other's backs and they are the best group in the world. But yeah, I definitely have a small handful of friends and I've always preferred it that way. I would rather have a couple really good friends than a lot of friends who are okay, but not always there for you. My friends have been there for me at four o'clock in the morning when I think I'm dying over a heartbreak or something. That's the kind of friends I have. That you are Midwestern from the accent. <laughs> so. I'd never been told I have an accent before this year from Daniel. <laughs> so it's really strange and I would do anything to be able to hear myself talking in a Midwestern accent because I have no idea what it sounds like because this is how I've always talked my whole life and how everyone else talks around me. But if I could be in someone else's mind and hear the way that I speak, that would be fascinating. But yeah, I'm from Michigan, born and raised and I still live here. I assume you're genuine. Thank you guys. You sometimes dim slash adapt your persona in attempt to fit better into a situation because of very understandable personal insecurities. 
You shouldn't because you seem awesome, fun, and unique. I totally see what you're saying. And that's not offensive at all. I guess I see your other comment. I definitely feel like I adapt my personality sometimes based on who I'm with or like what the vibe and feeling of the situation is. I do feel like sometimes putting videos of yourself on the internet, you have to... Mm, I don't tone down my personality, but I think that maybe there's some things about me that stand out a little bit more if you know me in real life but I am still being genuine to who I am, if that makes sense. But there's certain sides of myself that I feel like I don't always bring out around everyone. Plus I'm really, 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 really shy. So it takes a long time for me to open up to somebody in real life and like be my true self. She also says you feel more at home in nature than in cities. Oh God, without a doubt. I hate the city. I love nature. I love beaches. I love mountains. I love the forest anywhere, anywhere in nature is when I feel my very best. I love hiking more than almost any other activity. I think there were more than that, but somehow I feel like I didn't save them. So I'm sorry if I didn't get to your assumption about me, but that was a lot anyways. My throat is almost tired from talking. So that was a lot of fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Sorry this video was so long. Let me know if you wanna do one of these in the future again, but hopefully you got to know a little bit more about me a little bit better. Thanks for taking the time to leave a comment. So let me know what response you were most shocked by. I'd be very interested to see. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.